on Bio, we take an in-depth look at the wonderful world of muscle physiology, featuring live interviews with key players in the process of muscle contraction and relaxation. We go now to Rick Timerson, who is on the scene with Carl Calcium. Thanks, Paul. So, Carl, we're here to see exactly what makes muscles tick. I notice that you seem to just be hanging around outside this axon. What is your role in this process? Whoa, whoa, it's pretty, pretty simple, you know. We calciums are big into the rush, so we just hang out here and wait for an action potential to come roaring past and open these channels. Then it's like so totally awesome as everyone glides through the channels, man. It's like the ultimate rush. Oh, oh, dude, here comes an action potential. Now, man, I got a jet. Well, one of the privileges of being on location is going along for the ride. Let's head on through this channel and see what else we can find. Yoo-hoo! Howdy. You're not from around here, are you? No, I'm actually just visiting, trying to gain a better understanding of the physiology of muscles. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you. I'm Annie Acetacoline. Nice to meet you. What exactly is your part in this process? Well, I'm really laid back. I just like to go with the flow. I hitch a ride on one of these here synaptic vesicles and I just go where it takes me. Usually when all these calcium fellas come barging in here, it's our cue to just head for the exit. Come on, I'll introduce you to some of my friends. All right. Welcome to the beautiful synaptic cleft. Wow, what do you do here? Well, this part's easy. We just float around and hang out wherever we fit in. Hey, Annie, what's up, girl? I haven't seen you around here for a while. Nikki, <coughs> just showing the new guy here what to do. All right, so are you going to charm that receptor into letting us sodiums in, or what? Yep, I'm headed over there that way now. The new guy might have some questions for you on the way over. Hi, I'm just here trying to find out what goes into the process of muscle contraction and relaxation. No problem, new guy. We're always glad to get a little respect for what we do. So what is it that you do? Well, as a sodium ion, I do have an important job. I wait out here in the synaptic cleft and wait for Annie and her acetylcholine friends to open the channels in this motor end plate. You see, once these channels are open, a bunch of sodium, myself included, will head through the motor end plate and inside the cell. Since we're all so positive and the inside of the cell is more negative, a depolarization occurs. I guess you could say we're the ones who get the action started. Once this channel opens, I'll take you through and you can watch the process. Cool. I just have one more question for Annie before we head in. Annie, you acetylcholines are really good at going with the flow. But it seems like your job is done now that you have alerted the receptors to allow the sodium into the cell. Now what do you do? That's a good question. You see that guy over there? His name is Abe Acetylcholine Esterase. He and the others like him will help me and all my acetylcholine friends get back inside the synaptic knob where you and me met. Thanks for all your help, Annie. Nikki's going to show me what depolarization is all about now. So you see, all we sodiums have to do is take our positivity inside the cell as some potassium moves into the synaptic cleft and the depolarization occurs, instantaneously sending an action potential across the cell. Hey, I'm Annette. Go ahead and follow me if you can. You'll catch a glimpse of what an action potential can really do. Thanks. So do you just travel along the sarcolemma? In a sense. We're going to take a trip into this T-tubule up here, which is really just an extension of the sarcolemma. As we head into the T-tubule, I will try to help you understand some of the pieces that make a skeletal muscle cell. A muscle is made up of many cells or muscle fibers, known as myofibers. A bundle of myofibers is called a fascicle. As you examine an individual muscle fiber, it is made up of smaller fibers, fibers called myofibrils. Each of those myofibrils are made up of other myofilaments, which you will learn about a little later. You can find other organelles in the cell, such as mitochondrion or sarcoplasmic reticulum. The part of the sarcoplasmic reticulum neighboring the T-tubule is, is known as terminal cisternae. As I race past the terminal cisternae, I notify them that it is time to release the calcium stored inside. Here they come now! Hey, uh, 
Thanks for getting us out of there. It was totally crowded. Who are you? I'm Corey, Corey Calcium. I've been cramped up in that terminal cisterny for a while, but Cal finally let us out. Cal? Yeah, Cal Sequestrian. He's in charge of making sure all of us calcium in the terminal cisterny stay out there even when it's overcrowded. Wow, that sounds like a pretty important job. I'm sure it is, but right now, I gotta get over to see Tori. Hey, Tori, this guy is following us all around, trying to see what we all do. He might want to ask some questions, but he's totally cool. Well, hi there. I'm Tori Tropinen. I bas basically sit around waiting for Cory or some other calcium to come to get, get together. Once we're together, I'm able to move this guy, Tommy. Hey. Tommy doesn't say much. The tropomyosins aren't real talkative. He spends most of his time covering up the active sites over on Alley Acton. I'm Allie. I guess it's only a matter of time before Marty gets up here ready to make a cross bridge. You can bet as soon as he and the notorious ATP get together, he'll be ready to join forces. Hey guys, me and the notorious ATP just met up. You ready to join forces, Allie? <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Can somebody please explain what is happening here? I'm a little lost. The notorious ATP got this. No offense, ATP, but nobody can understand what you're saying half the time. Okay, new guy, let me see if I can catch you up. Right now, you are in a sacromere, the basic functional unit of striated muscle. This is where the contraction takes place. Look around you. You see thin and thick filaments all arranged in a specific way. You know that when calcium binds to troponin, that tropomyosin is removed from covering the active site. Now my boy, the notorious ATP, comes over and gets me all worked up into this high energy state. Of course, that energy has got to be put to use. So I join forces with actin by attaching to the active site. As I do this, the notorious ATP loses a phosphate, becoming ADP, and causing me to move to a lower energy state. As I move, I pull the actin along with me, causing this sarcomere to contract. As m multiple sarcomeres contract, the whole muscle is able to contract. Whoa, so all the chemicals and different signals I've met today basically pass the contraction baton to you guys? That's right. So what happens when the muscle needs to relax? Well, the calcium gets pumped back into the terminal cisternae. As calcium leaves the troponin, tropomyosin is allowed to recover the active site. Without the active site to bind to, myosin has no way to connect with actin, and the muscle relaxes. Wow, this is fantastic. Thanks so much for helping me and all of our viewers to understand just how muscle contracts. Back to Paul in the studio. And that concludes another wonderful episode of Bio. Thanks for watching. Be sure to tune in next week to see our special Nerves, Nerves, You're on My Nerves.